misterioso es amor, vive en mí y en ti, misterioso es amor, que será. Good Friday to you. Today we're reflecting on the day that Jesus was led to the cross. And when Peter denied him three times, I know he shed a tear.
Welcome, everybody, to Faith Center's Good Friday service. Uh, we're going to open up with a scripture reading of the crucifixion um, from Matthew's account. I'm going to be reading from Matthew chapter 27. Uh, I'm going to start at verse, excuse me, here we grab it, verse 27. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the barracks and gathered the whole regiment together. They took off his clothes and dressed them, dressed them up in a scarlet military cloak. They wove a crown of thorns and stuck it on his head and put a reed in his right hand. Then they knelt down in front of him. Greetings, king of the Jews, they said, making fun of him. They spat on him. Then they took the reed and beat him about the head. When they had finished mocking him, they took off the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes again, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they found a man from Cyrene called Simon. They forced him to carry Jesus' cross. When they came to the place called Golgotha, which means skull place, they gave him a drink of wine mixed with bitter herbs. When he tasted it, he refused to drink it. Then they crucified him. They divided up his clothes by casting lots, and they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed the, the written charge above his head. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then they crucified two brig brigands, or bandits, or outlaws, alongside him, one on his right and one on his left. The people who were going by shouted blasphemy, said Jesus. They shook their heads at him. So, they said, you were going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, were you? Save yourself, if you're God's son, come down from the cross. The chief priests, too, and the scribes and the elders mocked him. He rescued others, they said, but he can't rescue himself. All right, so the king, so he's the king of Israel. Well, let him come down from the cross right now. And then we'll really believe that he is. He trusted in God. Let him let God deliver him. If he's that keen on him, after all, he did say he was God's son. The outlaws who were crucified alongside him heaped insults on him as well. 
From noon until mid-afternoon, there was darkness over the whole land. About the middle of the afternoon, Jesus shouted out in a loud voice, Elahi, Elahi, lema shabbatni, which means, My God, my God, why did you abandon me? Some of the people who were standing there heard it and said, This fellow calling Elijah. One of them ran at once and got a sponge and filled it with vinegar, put it on a reed, and gave him a drink. The other said, Wait a bit, let's see if Elijah is coming to come and rescue him. But Jesus shouted out loudly one more time and then breathed his last breath. At that instant, the temple curtain was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks were split, and tombs burst open. Many bodies of the sleeping holy ones were raised. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city where they appeared to many people. When the centurion and others with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and things happened, they were scared out of their wits. He really was God's son, they said. There were several women there, watching from the distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee, helping to look after his needs. They included Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. And the evening came, a rich man from Eurythmia uh, arrived. He was called Joseph, and he too was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and requested the body of Jesus. Pilate gave order that it should be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had carved out of the rock. Then he rolled a large stone across the doorway of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene was there, and so was the other Mary. They were sitting opposite of the tomb. The word of the Lord. Everybody, um, 
God bless everybody. Want to welcome you all. <laughs> Man, what an awesome um, song, worship. Just uh, songs of, um, of the power of the cross. You know, that song was um, a song that was done years ago. And um, man, it just it just resonates and just really uh, speaks to us about the power of the cross. I want us to open up right now with a word of prayer. I know that many of us have um, just uh, faced a lot of issues and situations in our lives, and especially right now at this time. And so I do want to open up with a word of prayer. Um, as we go to the Lord, I just realized I forgot to bring water and a chapstick. But uh, I want us to pray. Thank you so much for joining us uh, today. I just ask that the Lord will just bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you. For everyone that is watching, Lord, I pray by the Spirit of the Lord that you would just move, move in the hearts and lives of those that are gathered to hear the word of the Lord, those that will tune in in the future. I ask, Father, that you, God, will speak to our hearts that you would bring the revelation of the power of the cross. And Father, because it is the power of God unto salvation, you chose to take the cross in order to save. And Father, we thank you for that now. We thank you, Lord God, that through Jesus coming to this earth, taking on the human body, and tasting, God, of, of uh, the hate uh, and tasting of the rejection and tasting of sorrow and all, God, that we have tasted. Father, we thank you now that you sent Jesus to taste death that we might have life. And Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory we give you all the honor. Come on, lift that hand to the Lord wherever you're at. Just lift that hand. Father, I speak liberty. I speak peace. I speak in the name of the Lord, the King of kings. I speak in Jesus' name. Father, that you would break through all the doubt, the fears, the unbelief. I pray, Father, that you would give us a hearing ear. Give us seeing eyes. And most of all, Lord, give us a receptive, open heart to receive the word of the Lord. I ask, Father, that you would bring the word of God to each and every person now. And, Father, I come against every foul, wicked, evil, lying, tormenting, deceiving, unclean spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody out there, give a good shout of amen. <laughs> amen. Praise God. All right. Thank you, Nep, for reminding me that I have water over here. <laughs> Hold on for a minute. Thank you, honey, uh, for looking out for me. appreciate it. She came out and pointed at the water over there. Thanks so much, son. Well, you know, right now you just heard um, the scripture reading. And, uh, man, what a powerful story about how that, uh, how that Jesus, this is what's known this week as the Passion Week. Last week we were looking at the scripture that told us how that there was the, the, the prophetic promise. And we looked at it last week as I began to share with you from Zechariah, the prophet of old. From Zechariah chapter 9, 
He was looking into the future and as God was moving upon him. And he was speaking to God's people, saying to them in, in the uh, book of Zechariah, chapter 9, verse 9 through 12, when you get a chance, read it. But he was saying to them, behold, your king is coming to you riding on a donkey. Just last week, if we were to go back in a, a time machine and we were to be there with Zacharias as he's getting this revelation, this prophetic revelation, he looks into the future and he sees the coming king. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lord, the Prince of Peace. You know that that's what Jesus is really known as, the Prince of Peace. And so Zechariah, we seen last week that Zechariah was, was prophesying a prophetic word that was coming from the Lord to let us know that your King would come. The King of Peace would be coming. And then also that you would read in Matthew 21, and we didn't get to read it last week, but just for study time, look at Matthew 21, and you're going to see how that scripture, how that prophecy, that prophetic word that Zechariah gave, that Jesus fulfilled it. I challenge you to just go to the scriptures and you'll begin to see all the times that Jesus would, uh, was spoken of in the Old Testament and you will see how he fulfilled every single word that was spoken about him. And so one of the words was from Zechariah. Zachariah seen him coming riding on a donkey and I don't want to elaborate too much on last week's but he came riding on a donkey as a prince of peace he wasn't riding a horse yet we'll see that sometime in the book of revelation where he comes back riding on a horse but for now the prophet was just simply saying, Behold, your king is coming. That's what we seen last week, Matthew 21, verse 5. You can read it. You can read also John chapter 12. And you'll begin to see all that was spoken of him. So today, I want to just go into, um, I want to just talk to you about why Jesus came. Why Jesus had to come. And uh, just give me a moment. Sorry about that, folks. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm actually like, uh, you know, messing with my uh, Bible here, bringing it up uh, to go side by side. And so, anyways, I, I just want to go to the. Let, let me go first of all and talk to you about as we had um, spoke last week. Last week they came. They were celebrating Jesus. They were laying out the palm branches, saying Hosanna to the king, the excitement. And, um, but and then as the rejection of Christ and as he began to be rejected and as the rulers began to plot and to... Um, come against him and, and actually plotted to kill Jesus. One week he's being celebrated. And then by the end of the week, he's being rejected, despised. Isaiah 53 verse 9. And neither was any deceit in his mouth. He spoke the pure word of God. He came doing the will of God. And he only spoke that which he heard the Father speak. Oh, my Jesus, he's so awesome. He loves you. He died for you. He was crucified for you. He took your sin. He took your shame. He took it all on himself. And he nailed it to the cross. Pushing it aside, giving us that access as we believe by faith and are washed by that shedding of his blood, we're able to come boldly to the throne of grace. Come on, somebody. Just give God praise for that. 
We got to praise God for them. So there's no violence. He has done no violence. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. Look at verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord. It pleased, pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. And you will make him a soul. His, you will make his soul an offering for sin. And, his, and he shall see his seed. And I'm reading from the King James Old School. You can read it in modern translations. He'll prolong his days. He shall see his seed. And he'll prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. Jesus came to do the pleasure of the Lord. The Bible says in the book of Luke, it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He that didn't withhold his own son, how much more shall he give us good gifts? James says that every good gift, every good gift and every perfect gift comes from the father above. The father of lights. Let me keep reading here. In verse 10, the latter part says, The pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. Verse 11, He shall see, uh, he shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. Jesus Christ came to justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, listen to what the Lord is saying. As, as Jesus is fulfilling the prophetic promise of God from Isaiah, and the promise is after he's done this, he says, therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he has poured out his soul unto death and he was numbered with the transgressors. Think about it. Jesus was numbered with the transgressors. There was two of them, one on the left, one on the right. But he was numbered with all of us. And listen to what else he says. He was numbered with the transgressors, plural. And he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Come on, do we got any transgressors out there? I'll be the first one to tell you. I've probably been the biggest transgressor. But I'm also here to tell you that he also came to pay the price, the power of the cross, the power of what he did was to justify us, to save us. The arm of the Lord reaching out. This was the arm of the Lord coming to us and bringing us the life of God. Now I want to read to you. I'm going to be going over to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And if you want to turn there with me. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. So uh, go ahead and, um, you know, uh, I know you got your cell phone or your iPad or your regular um, pages from the Bible. But I want to read to you here as I get ready to close off because... Um, what a revelation of what Jesus did. What Jesus did through the power of the cross. Those songs that we opened up with were about the power of the cross. Let me have a drink. Excuse me for a minute. Uh, Jesus said, um, you who thirst come on to me. 
you'll get living water. There's nothing like nice, fresh water. How powerful it is when we get a revelation that Jesus was bruised, beaten, battered for my sin, for your sins, for the sins of the world. The Bible teaches that he died for the sins of the world. And I pray, Father, for a revelation of the power of the cross. Lord, the whole world thinks it was foolishness. But it was actually the power of God being revealed to us. It was the salvation of God coming to us through the very power of the gospel. And boy, I pray today that we would get that revelation of how much the cross really means to us, of how powerful it really is, of how much the Lord did for us through Christ's suffering. He suffered for us. Man, I, I remember years ago I was I was talking to somebody and, and you know certain things that it, they just seem to stick to me like glue. They just stick in my mind. I was talking to this guy one time about the Lord, how he loved him, how he died for him. And this story, it, it goes over way back, over near Danny's Dogs, for some of you that remember Danny's Dogs. The best chili dogs ever, chili cheese dogs especially. But as I was talking to him about the Lord, and I was saying to him how that the Lord died for him, he said, you see, that's why, man, I don't serve God and all that. Poor Jesus, look what they did to him. Look how he died. Look how he had to suffer. And what that told me was that he didn't understand the revelation of the crucifixion. Why the cross and the power of the cross. He didn't understand it. It made no sense to him. And I want to begin reading in the book of Corinthians. And before I read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, <laughs> I got to read to you from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I'm not going to take long tonight, but I thank you for t tuning in, for joining us. And uh, we appreciate you, um, uh, you know, being with us tonight. We appreciate your prayers, your support as we're trying to rally. And, and, and you know, uh, it seemed like, you know, over these last few weeks, we just got hit so hard and we were reeling and rocking. But yet our feet were fam uh, firmly planted in the Lord. When fear came knocking and all that other stuff and all the junk and everything that was going on, we had to find ourselves planted in the Lord. And I want to read 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and I want to go to verse number 17. I love these verses of Scripture. Why the cross? The revelation of Christ crucified. Listen to 1 Corinthians 1.17. Go there with me. Listen to what Paul is saying. The epistle of Paul, the apostle to the Corinthians in verse 17. Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Isn't that some Paul was concerned of preaching the gospel? What is the gospel? The good news. The message. The power. Some of us are busy just preaching all like, you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong, you're not this, you're not that, you're not good enough. Duh. <laughs> I already know. That. Like uh, one of my nephews would say, we already know that. We know that already. That's why we come to God. 
But he says, for God sent me, what did he say, verse 17? For Christ sent me, Christ sent me. Not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. That's what we really should be doing is preaching the gospel. What is the gospel? The good news, Christ died for you. That's the gospel. And listen to what he said. Not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. Look at verse 18. For the preaching of the cross. Here it is. What is the cross about? The preaching of the cross, and listen to this narrative of what Paul is saying to us. The preaching of the cross, underline it. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. So to those that are perishing, to those that have not considered the power of the cross, they're already perishing. And they consider it foolish legislators people of power people of influence educators the educated so many people think that the preaching of the cross is foolishness i remember years ago when i first started hearing these street preachers over in the san fernando mall i remember saying to myself man what does Jesus dying have to do with me? What does the cross have to do with me? <laughs> I, I just didn't see the relevance of the cross and why Jesus had to die. I just couldn't, I just couldn't, um, it just didn't seem relevant. I just couldn't seem to put it in its proper place and how that affected me or what good was it that he did. And it wasn't until the revelation, <laughs> Christ revealed. <laughs> Listen to this, because we know that Paul was a persecutor of Christ. And we know that he got the revelation of Jesus. And boy, he turns his life around and he starts preaching on the behalf of him he persecuted. He came. From, he went from a persecutor to a preacher, preaching the power of the cross. Persecutor to a preacher, preaching the power of the cross. And we know that if you go to the book of Acts 26 and other portions of the scripture, you'll find where he's giving his testimony of the revelation of Jesus Christ. So what does he say to us? 1 Corinthians 1, verse 18, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but to us which are saved, it is the power of God. The cross is the power of God to save. That's what changed our life. Today, if you don't know Jesus, if you don't know him right now where you're at, just simply open your heart, open your mind, and vocalize your faith. Reach out to him in faith. Connect your heart with his heart. And it's just a simple prayer way and you know don't get all tripped out when i say prayer like you got to say yes thou gracious holy most god no it's just like lord i don't know you lord i'm lost lord i'm confused lord i i, I don't know what's happening but lord if the power and if what you did on the cross is real then come into my life. I believe in you. Reveal yourself. This is what Paul is saying. He's saying that the preaching of the cross, it is the power of God. This is God's power. I pray the power of God will move right now where you're at. I pray God's power will break every demonic stronghold, every demonic foe that has risen in opposition 
to destroy you. We break it now in the name of Jesus. Listen to what else he said about the power of God. And I want to hurry up because I need to close this off. Listen, verse 20. Uh, excuse me, verse 19, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. Isn't that some? The wise are going to try to do, and of course, they're trying to do everything we can, save the planet, save the animals, save the, the you know, the <laughs> whatever, right? I was going to say the guppies, the pollywogs, the tadpoles. Save everything. But the reality is, as it is written, the Lord said, I'll destroy the wisdom of the wise. The wise are always, you know, trying to come up with the answers on how are we going to restore? How are we going to reclaim? How are we going to bring man to his fullest? How are we going to get to the place that God intended us to be? And the Lord said, I'll destroy the wisdom of the wise. He wasn't going to do it through the way they thought it would be done. And he said, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Verse 20, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Has not God made the foolish? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Verse 21, for after that in wisdom, for after that in the wisdom of God, the world by the wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. This is how God saves. Through the foolishness of the cross, through the foolishness of the preaching, to save those that believe that message. Look at verse 22. The Jews require a sign. The Greeks are seeking after wisdom, but we preach, verse 23, but we preach Christ crucified. That's our message today. Christ is crucified unto the Jews. He's a stumbling block, not, not to all. And we know that the Jews are coming to the revelation of the Messiah. But we preach, we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews, a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks, foolishness. I know, to, to the wise, they're like, man, that's foolish. But to us who are saved, <laughs> it's the joy of our salvation. Listen to verse 24. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not, not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and the base things of the world and the base things of the world and things which are despised has God chosen and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are that no flesh of glory in his presence now in verse 30 he said but of him you are in Christ Jesus who of God from God listen to this who of God has been made unto us this is what the cross did he's been made unto us wisdom righteousness sanctification and redemption Man, that is so awesome. The wisdom. We have the wisdom of God, child of God. We see the true nature of things in this life. We have insight. We have, we have insight that comes divine understanding, divine insight. 
We have righteousness. We're, we have the righteousness of God. No matter what accusations, whether it's uh, uh, fleshly accusations or worldly or demonic, we have been made righteous and we have the righteousness of God. And we've been sanctified, meaning we've been set apart. You've been sanctified, set apart, called of God, drawn out. <laughs> And you have redemption. We are redeemed. What that means is, even though we're here in this life, we walk with a revelation of the power. We walk in the power of the gospel of the cross. We walk in, in what the cross did for us. We have peace with God. And he goes on, verse 31, that according as it is written, if you're going to glory, let him glory in the Lord. Let's boast in the Lord. Let's boast in what God has done. And then in chapter 2, Paul continues to write. He says, and brethren, I didn't come to you. When I came to you, I didn't come to you with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness. This is Jesus. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. This is Paul, right? I think Jesus also, you know, tasted of this. And Paul is declaring that he was with us in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And then in verse 4, he said, And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak the wisdom among them that are perfect, Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor are the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Look at verse 8, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. Verse 9, but as, as it is written, I has not seen or ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Wow. I'm going to be closing today. Thank you so much for taking this time to join us. I pray that, Lord, I just pray, Father, that those that are listening, those that are tuning in and will tune in, Father, I pray by the Spirit of the Lord. Lord, bring revelation in the midst. And even now, Father, while we're mandated to be indoors, to stay in, I pray, Father, that through all that is happening throughout the world, I pray the spirit of the Lord would be upon you tonight. I pray in the name of Jesus from this day forward that he will penetrate your whole entire being, bringing the revelation of himself. And Father, we thank you. Now pray this prayer. If you need Jesus, just like I, I said a prayer years ago, in a little storefront church, as those around us were sitting on bean bags, and as the preacher kept saying, if you want Jesus, he kept saying, look up at me. And I remember I was so scared. 
I was afraid because I had reached a point in my life where I really wanted the Lord. But I didn't know what he would require. I didn't know what he would do. I didn't know the goodness of God that he was going to bring me into. I didn't know that he would begin to take my broken heart, my bruised life, my life that, that was that seemed like it had no direction. I didn't realize that he would take the pieces of my life and begin to put it back together again. And today, right now, I want you to just bow your heads and I want you to just to lift your hand up to the Lord. And just pray this simple prayer. Connect your heart with the heart of God. And just say, Jesus, I believe. I believe that you suffered. You were bruised, beaten, and battered for my transgressions. You were bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace was upon you. And Lord, by those stripes, you came to heal me. You came to make me whole. You came to transform my life. You came, Father, to give me divine purpose. And Father, right now I believe that you died for me. That you were put in a grave. And Lord... I believe you didn't stay in the grave. You rose from the dead. Come into my life. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said amen. <laughs> the Lord bless you. Man, um, I just pray that as you prayed that prayer, I, I pray that the, this, the spirit of the Lord is going to come upon you. I got to tell you, just like I prayed that prayer Back in the mid-70s, I didn't realize that just that prayer and asking God, I didn't realize that, boom, he, the Spirit of the Lord would latch himself to me and would begin to speak to me, would begin to give me visions, begin to give me dreams, or begin to give me insight. I pray that the Lord will do the same for you. Just like, uh, I, I believe it's in, um, in um, I got to read this to you if I can find it real quick. Just like what Paul said over in the book of Galatians, man, such a such a, a, a powerful uh, verse of scripture and um, uh, something that he read. <laughs> I hope I can find it because, you know, you know, um, man, sometimes, um, you know, um, from our busyness and and all that we're, we're doing in our life and whatnot, um, you know, we, we need to know, man, that the Lord loves us. In uh, Galatians six 14, I'm going to close off, I promise you. Uh, verse 14, listen what he says, man. God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me. And I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision avails anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Wow, that is so awesome. And so thank you for tuning in. I just pray that um, you're blessed through this word. And um, I'm going to end this today. Uh, the Lord bless you. I, I am going to just take a quick um, look to see, um, um, you know, for those of you that might have like uh, tuned in and um, asking for prayer. I'm not able to see them currently. And so we pray for you now. Uh, we're praying for you. Um, each and every person watching uh, on Facebook, thank you so much. Uh, take the time to share this um, scriptures, uh, not only the scriptures, share these scriptures with your friends and families. Also, uh, subscribe. Also, at the end of this, um, you know, please follow us. 
um you know when it goes on there follow follow my um follow my lead <laughs> follow my um posts like when we go live you know hit subscribe also like our page um we do have a page and i'll put it up there later uh on facebook faith center sf faith center sf we also have uh faith center las palmas park um but subscribe follow us and i'm gonna close off with a song by um by willie g this song man i love this song uh only because it takes me back to back in the day and uh, i am gonna have to go over there and um hit you know hit a button and all that kind of stuff but thank you so much for watching. We appreciate it. Give me a minute here. All right. This is um, Willie G. At my worst, you found me. I don't know if I need to turn it up or not. Willie G, ladies and gentlemen. I love this because at our worst, Jesus found found us. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Excuse the panza when I got up. That's what happened when you were white. Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. I pray for those of you that have been tribulating, those of you who have been going through stuff. God keep you. God bless you. In Jesus' name, thank you for signing on today. Have a good night. Don't forget to join us Sunday morning, our Easter service. We got a, a great service planned for you. Um, be blessed, and we'll see you Sunday. Don't forget to support us at faithcenter.cc. Also, if you want to mail out a check or something, you can send it to P.O. Box 986, San Fernando. We also use Venmo and all that other good stuff. God bless. And now I love you too So tell